hi guys in this lecture we will understand about wpf architecture now to be very frank to you this is a very boring topic and if you are a developer or uh, you say you are developing wpf applications uh, from my experience i can tell you i have been developing wpf applications since last seven years and i didn't encounter any case where i needed to understand wpf architecture while developing a code but since you are working in wpf so you need to know or you need to understand the architecture of the technology in which you are working so therefore this lecture is just for the understanding that how wpf is structured internally and this is a theoretical lecture so rather pay attention and try to remember all these uh, points what i have told you in this uh, lecture and if you go to interviews many interviewers might ask you that uh, what do you understand about the architecture of wpf so you might be in a good position to explain to them that you understand the architecture of wpf so let's move forward so wpf is basically divided into three components uh, and this is the diagram or say picture which i found in google so you can easily find this uh, diagram in google and this explains the architecture of wpf so it has three components managed layer unmanaged layer and the operating system core elements so as you can see in the managed uh, layer there is window base dll there is presentation framework dll there is presentation core dll so these three dlls or these three libraries constitute the main part of wpf so if you are working in wpf application you will see these all three dlls in your application references so let me show you this quickly so let's go to the references uh, this is a wpf uh, application what i have made it, it uh, usually doesn't have anything so here here are the three dlls presentation core presentation framework and windows base so these three dlls constitute the main part of wpf application also what are dlls they those are libraries or say assemblies or you can say there are collection of classes so these presentation core presentation framework and windows base have all the classes that are required to work in wpf say suppose uh, i am using a grid so this grid class is present somewhere in presentation framework okay so let's move back to our slides so here are the description of this presentation framework so this section has windows panels styles controls layouts content and so on and it implements the end user presentation features including data binding time dependencies animations and many more so let's see in our application so let's go back to our application and let's open this presentation framework in the object browser so here is the presentation framework dll and let me expand this right so this is a assembly which i have expanded and now I, I can see the classes which are contained in this assembly you can see the all the controls are contained in this assembly say button calendar canvas or say data grid image group box etc so all these presentation things or say styles controls layouts etc are contained in the presentation framework dll next comes the presentation core dll now this is a api exposed by wpf providing for 2d 3d geometry and so on and it also contains visual elements so let's check into our dlls so let me collapse the presentation framework and expand presentation co you can see i have all the media elements in presentation frame core dll say brush or uh, color so all the visual elements are present all the elements those are responsible for the visual representation are present in presentation core say ellipses or uh, fonts phone family so all these things are 
responsible for the visual representation of the elements in WPF. So this is contained in presentation core DLL. Okay, let's move back. And next comes the Windows base DLL. So it holds the more basic elements that are capable to be reused outside the WPF environment like dispatcher objects and dis dependency objects. Now dispatcher object is a very important concept in WPF which is responsible for the multi-threading part in WPF. So this is contained in Windows base DLL and all the dependency objects those are responsible in taking part in data binding and dependency properties are also contains in, uh, contained in Windows base DLL. So let's go back and expand window base. Okay, and you can see system that Windows the threading name space is present in Windows base DLL and it also contains dispatcher class, right? And this dispatcher class is responsible for threading in WPF. So this threading part is maintained by windows base and if you can if you expand this system dot windows so you can get the dependency object in windows base dll okay and you can see the dependency property is also present in here so this system dot windows base dll is uh, responsible for dependency properties and dispatcher objects so let me collapse it and close it so i guess this presentation framework presentation core and windows based dlls are clear to you these three dlls constitute the managed part of wpf application let's move back and then comes the unmanaged part or the middle part of wpf architecture so it has a mill core dll which is not visible to us in our application but you can understand that it acts as a interface between managed and the unmanaged part or say suppose the Milcore DLL is acting as a bridge between user and the presentation framework presentation core and windows DLL okay and then the second part is windows codex DLL now you can see in the description it is mentioned that in WPF applications uh, Processes like image processing, image displaying, and scaling are uh, done with the help of Windows Codex DLLs. Now, to understand this uh, DLL, you need to understand what are Codex. So, Codex are the small programs; those are responsible for anything that is displayed on the screen. So, let me show you a very simple example, a very simple day-to-day -day basis example. What you do in your day-to-day -day basis. Now you might have watched many movies and or TV series in your laptops, right? So here is one of my favorite series. It's called Arrow. And you can see all the episodes of this series in, in the MKV format. Okay. So the file format of the video file is a MKV format. And it, it is by default a VLC media player file. That means when I will run this episode, my episode will be opened in vlc media player right and since vlc media player supports the mkv codex i can run this file say suppose i try to open it in windows media player right so let's try to open this in windows media player so let's go there and let me check window media player and try to open it in windows media player and you can see this mkv format is not supported by window media player that's because window media play player does not have the necessary codex installed in it okay so let me and you can see the error in here the player might not support the file type or it might not support the codec so codec is what what is responsible for displaying something onto the screen let's move back to our slide so this windows Codex DLL contains all the necessary codex. Those are responsible for displaying the 3D, the animation, each and everything onto our screen. Let's move forward. And here comes the operating system part or say the, you can see the last part say operating system core element layer. Okay. So this is the 
operating system core element layer so these all things are present in the system in which you are working so say suppose you are working in a system with uh, nvidia graphic card or you are working with a system that is owned by hp or dell so it will have some drivers from hp or some drivers from dell so all these things will be covered in this layer okay so it is basically the end user system configuration so it has a direct x api so direct x api i have told in my first lecture also it's responsible for the 3d animation parts in a video game or say suppose in a computer so that is contained in this layer then user 32 and gdi all the all the, these two parts are present in window forms also so these um, two things are responsible for the windows look and feel of our controls say button text box all these are windows look and feel and these are present just because of user 32 and gdi okay and then we have clr environment so if you are working with a wpf application you need to install the dotted framework runtime 4.0 or 5.0 whatever it be but you need to install the dotnet framework in it okay the moment you install the dotnet framework in it you will have a clr in it so you need to have uh, clr in the system so you can work with the dotnet classes okay and then we have device drivers so whichever system you are working in it um, be it dell be it hp you uh, though each and every system will have each and individual drivers for them so this part is basically operating system core element or the third part of wpf architecture so the if a user is working in a very highly configured system it might have a very highly configured user operating system core element say suppose if you have a low end computer so it might have a low end operating system core element okay this part depends on the system in which you are working so i hope this uh, lecture has cleared the wpf architecture for you now you i guess you might be in good position if someone asks you what is the architecture of wpf remember the three key points uh, wpf managed layer wpf unmanaged layer and the operating system core element part which has all the uh, things that are associated with your end system okay so i hope you en enjoyed this video if you have any doubt please leave a comment below i will try to answer it and please do subscribe to my channel thank you so very much